Hey everybody, it's Mrs. G again in her home art room. I'm here today to do another art lesson with you. This one is going to be geometric shapes and we are going to overlap them to create new shapes. Um, we'll talk about how you can also use abstract shapes if you want and we're going to make a picture together. So get some paper ready. You can use um, copier paper. You could use thicker um, paper from a sketchbook. If you want to paint, that would probably be a better idea. Um, you'll need a Sharpie if you have one. If you don't have a Sharpie, a black crayon would work good or a colored pencil, black colored pencil. And you're going to need a pencil and probably an eraser. So get your materials together and we'll get started. Okay, so here's an image um, of an artwork that I did um, last night. And you can see I've made a lot of geometric shapes. They're overlapping and they're filling up the paper. And each place that they overlap, you can create new shapes and color them different colors, which is fun. So in this artwork, I think I'm going to use geometric shapes, which we also used in our robot drawings. Um, geometric shapes, but also some abstract shapes. So abstract shapes are shapes that you don't know the name of. They um, can have different types of sides. Maybe one side might be straight and the other sides could be curvy. Um, they don't have names and so those are fun to draw too. So let's start with a um, sheet of paper. This is just copier paper. Um, you could use a thicker paper. If you have a thicker paper from a sketchbook, that might be better if you're planning on painting like I am. So I'm going to start with some shapes that I know the names of. So some geometric shapes. Um, I'm going to do a nice large oval here. Remember to draw lightly so that if you want to erase and change your work, it's easy to do so. It disappears rather than it being still a line there. I'm going to do a rectangle that's going to be coming, starting right here inside my oval and going right off the page. It's a long rectangle. Now I think I might want to make an abstract shape. So I'm going to have my shape kind of have a wavy edge, so not quite sure what it's going to be. Maybe it kind of looks like slime, a blob of slime. So those aren't overlapping, but I could make a shape that overlaps both of them. I'm thinking a triangle might be good right here. Like that. So I'm making pretty big shapes. And I'm making some of them go off the edge of the paper. I have an empty space right here and I have a lot of empty space here. Sometimes when I'm making an abstract artwork like this, I like to turn my paper every now and again so I see it from a different point of view and it helps me to see maybe some spaces that I could fill up. So how about I use um, a circle. The circle is going to look like it's going off the edge of the paper. Okay. And I have not used a square yet. So how about a square right here? Okay, it didn't quite match up. All right, now I think I'm gonna do an abstract shape here that might connect those two together and go off the edge of the paper. So this abstract shape is gonna have some zigzaggy edges. Maybe it's gonna look kind of like a star but not quite be a star. Okay, I've got this big space here that I could fill up. Hmm, what could I do? Hmm, maybe a line like this. This would be an abstract shape, wouldn't it? My paper is starting to get pretty full. I don't want to fill it up too much because then I'll have a lot of tiny shapes to color in and that might be hard. So at this point, when it looks pretty full, sometimes I just add a few shapes to fill in some empty spaces. Maybe that could look like the tip of a diamond or a triangle. And when I think it's finished, I'm going to Sharpie it. Again, if you don't have a Sharpie, 
you could use a black crayon and outline on these lines or a black colored pencil would work too. Remember when you're using a Sharpie to be very careful with it. It's a permanent marker to get on your clothes and not wash out. So we want to be really careful with it. Concentrate as we're working. The reason why I like to use Sharpies in art class is because it doesn't smudge or smear when we paint on our paper afterwards. Okay, I'm done tracing. Now I'm gonna take my eraser and clean up some of the places where my pencil marks are still showing. When I'm erasing, I like to make my hand in an L and I like to use my eraser in between that L area and it helps my paper not rip or bend while I work. Okay, I'm ready to add color. So to color this, you could choose to use um, crayons, markers, or watercolors. Watercolor pencils are fun. I'm going to use um, my set of watercolors that I have. These are um, borrowed from school, and I even have a water cup borrowed from school. And I'm going to add water to these to make them work and make sure I'm keeping my palette clean by rinsing my brush every time I want to switch to a new color. Remember to hold your paintbrush like a pencil. Okay, so the first color I always like to use when I have clean water and a clean brush is yellow. Yellow gets dirty really easily, especially if your water is dirty. So yellow is a great color to use first while your water is clean. So I'm gonna use yellow for this really big shape. Whenever I run into a black line, I know that has to be a different color. So I'm gonna outline my shape first. Make sure I stay in my lines by dragging my brush. You probably have a little bit of a different brush with your watercolor set. Mine is a square brush. You probably have a thicker round brush. So you still want to drag it along the line like that and then when you get close to an edge you stop and start again and when you get close to an edge you stop and that will help you stay in your lines. So once you've outlined all of your shape you can fill it in with your paint. And again I'm trying to Go really neatly and stay in my lines. If you're painting on copier paper, you can see it's gonna to start to buckle a little bit just because it's not meant to hold a lot of water. All right, now I'm gonna use yellow for another shape. While I have yellow on my brush and clean water, I'm still gonna use yellow. I like to scatter my colors around my picture so I don't want to use it all in one spot. Um, I wouldn't want to make any of these shapes yellow because this shape is already yellow. So I want to kind of spread out the yellow. I'm going to have a little bit of yellow on this triangle. And maybe over here. When I have to paint in a little space, I put my paintbrush up and down and just use the tip. Sometimes that helps stay in the lines. Okay, I have three spots of yellow. I think I'm ready to move on to a new color. So next I'm gonna use orange. I'm adding water to the orange. And now I have to decide where I wanna paint some orange. I think I'm gonna paint some orange right here.
Okay, I'm finished painting my geometric and abstract overlapping shapes. I like looking at it. It makes me happy with all the bright colors and it looks like there's a lot of stuff happening in the picture. Um, I like it. I'm happy with how neat I painted the edges and how carefully I painted it. I hope you enjoyed this activity and I will see you next time.